Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, we talk sports at this point in time. Now, in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the United States, European Union, the United Kingdom, Australia, and others have said that they are moving to scrutinize the asset of a handful of rich and powerful Russians. Now, this government says such people have profited from close ties to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now, Russian billionaire paid £140 million pounds to acquire the club back in 2023, 2003, I beg your pardon. According to the reason, the Abramovich, the reason for Abramovich selling the club is that it's attributed to the threat of being sanctioned by the United Kingdom government. And if that happens, it means that all of his assets would actually be frozen and he would definitely lose everything. Abramovich says the net proceeds from the sale of Chelsea will be donated to a foundation for the benefit of all victims of the war in Ukraine. Joining us to make sense of this is a journalist, a sports journalist, and also the director and communications officer of Andreza FC, Mighty George. It's good to have you join us this morning on the show. Guys, uh, good morning, everyone. And, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. All right, uh, thank you, Mary Tujab. But just before we get into all of the discussion, let us take uh, quickly take um, this video. And the mighty, mighty judge will be doing a whole lot of explanation to us concerning the future of um, Chelsea in a moment. Uh, stay with us. As threats to sanction Russia's oligarchs intensify, Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich said he would sell Chelsea Football Club after 19 years, promising to donate money from the sale to help victims of the war in Ukraine. The medals magnet said in a statement Wednesday that a sale was in the best interests of the reigning European and world soccer champions. The announcement comes as Russian billionaires come under intensifying pressure. Earlier in the day, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson declined to comment on whether Britain would impose sanctions on Abramovich, but said the vice was tightening on those around Russian President Vladimir Putin. And in the U.S., Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced further efforts to sanction Russia's elite. We and our allies and partners are launching a task force to identify, track down, and freeze the assets of sanctioned Russian companies and oligarchs. Business tycoon Hans-Jörg Weiss told a newspaper that he was considering buying Chelsea from Abramovich, saying Abramovich wanted to get rid of Chelsea quickly and was trying to sell his villas in England as well. Abramovich bought the West London Club in 2003 for a reported £140 million, an investment that led to the most successful era in the team's history. The 55-year-old, who has Israeli and Portuguese citizenship, became one of Russia's most powerful businessmen by earning fortunes after the 1991 breakup of the Soviet Union. Forbes has put his net worth at $13.3 billion. So the breakfast and we do have Mighty George joining the conversation this morning. Thank you once again for being part of the breakfast. We do appreciate your time. It's to be here as well every time. All right, so Mighty George, let's get to the crux of the matter. What do you think the fate of uh, the football club Chelsea will be? I mean, now that uh, Abramovich is considering selling Chelsea, and we know that under his ownership of this club, uh, the club has done very well, winning 21 trophies, and probably have had several buyings, and that's because of the resources available. Well, um, you know, most people who are Chelsea fans today only just recognize the Abramovich era, which of course started back in 2003 to, to date. It's been the most successful era of Chelsea Football Club. And, um, you know, you just want to start thinking how uh, it would, how the club would fare, you know, um, without Abramovich. Well, many have said, you know, he brought in the money, but uh, Abramovich actually brought in the personnel as well, which unfortunately we hear some of them will be leaving. You know, there's a football a woman who um, transited from just being his personal assistant to learning the ropes in football and now um, responsible for a lot of, you know, buys and successes and ma marketing for us of uh, um, Chelsea Football Club. Chelsea Football Club and Abramovich uh, turned from a selling club 
you know, uh, from a buying club rather to a selling club. At a point, you, when they came and uh, the, were the ones with the biggest money before the now was Chelsea who were splashing the cash on players, you know, brought Shevchenko at that time for a record fee, you know, this led to bring all, all the big players. All right, mighty judge. From, from, from across the globe. And then they turned into a very business you know, Yeah. Hello? All right, uh, we, we seem to be having a bit of disconnect, but I just wanted to find out uh, um, the um, consequences and the, the aftermath of all of this, because from his statement, he says he's um, passing the stewardship. Is he still in control, and will it affect um, the day-to-day -day running or activities of the Chelsea Football Club? Well, as it is, you know, the first thing he did was hand over to the Board of Trustees of the Foundation, but... Um, you know, they have said, and uh, the UK have said that that's not enough. You need to sell it outrightly and have no control over it. So that's definitely what's going to happen. Roman Abramovich would cease to be the owner of Chelsea Football Club. And uh, there will be a new owner, obviously. Um, when the $4 billion valuation is met, of which we hear now that the owner of Newcastle is, you know, has thrown in $3 billion. When that is met, um, Amanda Stelope would be the new owner, and so um, Roman Abramovich will not be calling the shots anymore. Anyone who pays as much as four billion definitely will be calling the shots. So it is indeed the end of an era. It's the end of Abramovich era. They've asked him to pack his things. We don't want any businesses, uh, you know, connected to Abramovich, who is a well-known Russian and uh, a, a well-known. I mean, in quotes, associate of uh, Putin when it comes to um, them having acquaintances. So, so there will be a new player, a new owner, if surely there's a new buyer. But it's interesting to know that it's not just Chelsea who are, you know, owned by the Russian side. And uh, that's why some criticisms have come, you know. Um, also, in uh, the owner of Obama is actually um, a Russian, actually a Uzbek Russian. And so um, the pressure hasn't come so much, you know, upon one. I'm not, I'm not sure why. He's a Russian citizen. Also, Usmanov, the owner of Everton, is a Russian as well. But we're hearing that he's also having plans to sell uh, Everton. But you can see why it's, it's all about Chelsea. They're the biggest club affected by this one right now. And uh, no doubt, um, if a probably sells and collects that money, then he ceases to be the owner and calling the shot. So it's effectively going to see an end on the problem which quite unfortunate. All right. So, so but my do you see this affecting transfer? Because maybe just maybe the clubs would probably, or the club would have to be spending more and would not be dependent on Abramovich. And we know that resources, you can't take this out. And some people have actually said that Chelsea fans might not be seeing, like you have rightly put the splash of money on players. And so we probably might not see the season of, you know, signing uh, players and those uh, whose contract would just expire might just not be renewed. Well, there are lots of shakeups that will come with uh, having a new owner. Uh, it'll be a new philosophy. Uh, for Abramovich, it's always been, I need to get the best. Uh, one notable thing you know about Abramovich era is the turnover of coaches. Uh, but you would argue that they've, they've won, you know, quite a number of trophies. So if you get, if you sack a big coach like who's hitting, you know, Jose Mourinho and bringing, uh, you know, um, uh, Jose Scolari, and you get win titles, so it's no big deal. So um, the philosophy of the owner would really uh, determine how Chelsea will shape this time around. Good thing they have one of the best academies. And uh, if you check some of the players who's coming from uh, the lower ranks, Chelsea have been doing well uh, from academy players, from, of course, Hudson, Adore, and Kamene, Reese James. Those are all players. It would be Tammy Abraham who had to be lowered down uh, to AS Roma. So they're doing well with the academy, and that's why they started putting you know, the spending. I, just, I think that any owner that comes now should try to borrow the uh, Bramovich model. It would work very well. Um, anyone that could drop three to four billion to buy the club should be able to um, be ready to also spend money 
uh, to buy players as well. But knowing that you're parting with that sort of money, you might just want to be conservative uh, in terms of player first projects and see what you can do uh, with players that you have inside. Uh, for Chelsea, if they are going out to buy a player on the Abramovich, they, they don't mind how much that player is. Yeah. So, 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 so do you say... Do so, so the question you haven't, I'm, I'm hoping that you just, uh, you know, answer that. Does, yeah. uh, do you see this affecting the fact that uh, the transfer season might not just, uh, fans might not just be seeing all of the buying and splashing of monies on players? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. surely, surely. You know, I started by saying it depends on the philosophy or the financial progress of the new owners. But if you spend that much money to buy a club, I'm sure you want to be conservative in your spending. So it is likely uh, that Chelsea would not be seeing a big, you know, signings, at least in the first season of the club. But uh, like I said earlier, on, I think they're pretty comfortable. They're, they're dominant in the world scene, they're the world champions. They can't just rely on the fact that we still have some very great players, you know, to see us for another season. Uh, but surely we're not going to see, you know, Chelsea splash the cash in the transfer market if, and uh, well, it's a matter of when now this uh, club transfer goes through uh, because the UK is hell bent on making it happen. Now, All right. Uh, okay, go ahead, Mercy. Uh, so just before I let Justin come the throw now, uh, there's also some school of thought saying that when Chelsea was taken over by uh, Roman Abramovich uh, in 2003, that also made it difficult, you know, it, it became a rivalry. Chelsea became a rivalry with the Liverpool. And if Chelsea is going to be sold out and not going to be under the, the you know, the control of uh, ownership of Abramovich, then there's a possibility that um, uh, that competition might just be eliminated and the likes of Liverpool and Mighton United might just be topping the chart in terms of the games. Well, <laughs> well, that's that's just uh, a school of thought, but it sometimes doesn't really count. Yes, Chelsea um, were pretty much a decent side, but not, I mean, a struggling side, uh, uh, pre-Abramovich era. But he came in and he showed the world that money can actually change things. And uh, that's the same model that Manchester City came with too, when the Abu Dhabi group came to, uh, you know, buy them. Um, over and you know got the likes of Pellegrini, got uh, you know great players from across you know the continent as well. Uh, it's a matter of the money. It's a bad matter of uh, you know the acumen of the owner. But Chelsea have now established themselves as a dominant force. So regardless of who the owner is, I think that Chelsea would still have that sort of mentality uh, moving forward. Um, Manchester United still have the same owners, you know, from the Alex Ferguson era, but look at how they are. They're, they're struggling these days. You know, same with Arsenal as well. Yes, it might give some of those teams some, uh, you know, confidence to see how, uh, maybe, to see how they can deplete Chelsea. Chelsea is a bit uh, shaken now. Let's see how we can, you know, um, you know, make them, get them back out of the top four, but that's that's not the case. I think Chelsea have, have built a very strong base from the academy up. They have lots of wonderful football structures, and whoever is inheriting the club should maintain those structures, because that's what I've seen them win 21 titles under the Abramovich era, and now they're club world champions. So uh, it doesn't really count if uh, you know the ownership changes and the, the rivalry might change. I think that Chelsea uh, would still be around there in the top four still be causing a lot of problems but surely it's the mentality now if you have new staffers who come in um if this affects the morale of the players the current players because i know Ron Abramovich usually has one-on-one -on -one, you know interface with the players and his friends with some of them if this affects them psychologically and the new owners and the coach cannot bring them up uh, to that level where they, they, they know that look people will come and go. Uh, uh, although this is quite tough, this is an owner, you know, right. coming and going. If they cannot lift themselves out of that psychologically, it would affect the team this season. And then we'll have to wait and see what your strategies will be brought about next season. But for that rivalry, I think that Chelsea will come to stay, you know, just the same way Manchester City will come to stay right, as well. Right, uh, yeah, it's all about the mentality now. 
All right, Mighty George, thank you so much um, for bringing up um, all of those angles that we really need to know concerning the future of um, Chelsea and, of course, uh, uh, European football, uh, English and Premier League concerning um, the Russian uh, invasion of um, Ukraine and, of course, uh, most of these clubs having um, Russian ownership. We do appreciate your time, Mighty George. Thank you very much. Uh... All right. Uh, uh, that's the size of the show uh, for today. We must say a very big thank you to all of you who have sat back to watch the show uh, all through Monday to Friday. My name is Justin Akadonye. And I am Messia Boko. In case you've missed out on any part of the conversation, that's all right to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's at Plus TV Africa. And do not forget to subscribe to YouTube channel. That's at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messia Boko. Many thanks for watching.